Hallelujah. Bwana asifiwe sana. We thank God for this day, even for this moment that we are in his presence. Jina la Bwana litukuzwe kwa kuwa yeye ametupenda that uh, he loved us in this day that we were able to see this morning. He gave us good health. He gave us breath. He has even given us uh, strength to be able to be in his presence and even to be able to worship him. Bwana asifiwe sana. Bwana asifiwe sana. Bwana atukuzwe. Amen. So asubuhi ya leo nashukuru sana kwa ajili ya nafasi hii eh, kuweza kusimama mbele zenu na neno la Mungu. Nashukuru eh, our pastor and the church leadership. I thank God even for giving me this opportunity to stand here to be able to share the word with us that uh, we may hear and that we may receive from the Lord. Bwana asifiwe sana. So even as we share the word of the Lord, I am so humbled that uh, I am allowing the spirit of the Lord to continue to minister to my heart that even as we share this word, uh, I may not speak of my own, but that which is of the spirit. Ndio tuweze kupokea na tuweze kubarikiwa. Bwana asifiwe sana. So we thank God this morning. My name is Peter Gisheru for those who don't know my name. I am married to one wife, and uh, the Lord has blessed us with one baby, and we thank God for his blessings. Bwana asifiwe sana. So this morning, yes, um, um, I feel charged in, the, in my spirit. I feel this word of this uh, uh, that the Lord has, has put in my heart uh, is also ministering to my heart. Uh, even as we continue, we shall continue to share, and I believe that God will continue to bless us that God will continue to minister and to speak it right into our hearts. That this word will be personal. This word, everyone of us, kila mtu ataipokea in your way, in a way that God will minister to your heart, to your life. Bwana asifuwe sana. So, yes, uh, first uh, we can pray and then uh, we can continue. Father, we thank you for your word this day. We thank you, Lord, that we are in your presence, Master. Redeemer, we do not take it for granted that we are here. We came, my God. Our hearts are ready and willing to receive from you, Master. Oh, may you teach us, Lord, that we may not just have come into this place, my Father, and live the same way, my Father, but that God, as we came, my Father, we are praying in the name of Jesus that we shall not live the same way, my King. Father, may you use me just as a vessel that I may share that which is of the Spirit, that which comes from you, my Father. I pray to be just, but nothing more, just a vessel, my God, and that my Father, our hearts, may receive from you, my Father, that the fire of the Holy Spirit shall go right into our hearts, my God, and that, Lord, we shall hear and receive from you in this day. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen. So we thank God so much uh, this morning uh, that we are in his presence. Yes, and as we continue this journey as Christians, there are times that we face things that only the power and the grace of the Lord can be able to, to you know, to uh, like save us from uh, the situations that at times we go through. And that is why uh, 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 today's uh, topic is uh, finding breakthrough in his presence. That we may find breakthrough even as we continue in his presence. Bwana tukuzwe. So if we check uh, in, the, in the Bible, the, stro the story of the Israelites from the book of Genesis, when, when Jacob, uh, had, uh, Jacob had his sons, and one of his sons was Joseph. And when the brothers sold Joseph, he was sold and he was taken into the land of Egypt. Now when he was there in Egypt, the, there was, uh, the Lord had a plan to come and get his people out of the land of Egypt. And as they dwelt in the land of Egypt, as we took the, 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 the sermon of this day that we are sharing, is that finding breakthrough in his presence. What do I want to say? That when they were in Egypt, they were not in the presence of the Lord. 
Bwana asifiwe. Because in the land of Egypt, there were altars for the Egyptians. There were gods for the Egyptians. So the only thing that the children of Israel would have asked from the Lord when they were in the land of Egypt was that they were, they needed the breakthrough. Bwana asifiwe sana. They were not in the presence. They were not in, in the place where the Lord would have wanted them to be. Bwana asifiwe sana. So maombi yao ingekua that we want to find breakthrough. Bwana asifiwe. But for us today, as we continue uh, to kiendelea, to kishiriki uh, this word, when the Lord visited the, uh, the, 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 the Israelites through Moses, when they were in Egypt, in the book of Exodus, the, the Lord started the plan of bringing back his children into his presence. Bwana asifiwe sana. So that his children, wakati wa medwell, wakati wako in his presence, wataweza kujua kwamba, in the presence of the Lord, I can find breakthrough. Bwana asifiwe. So when they were in Egypt, the only prayer they would have placed before the Lord, the, the, the simple prayers, Bwana nisaidie niweze kusurvive hapa. Bwana nipe nguvu niweze kufanya kazi. Maana I am a slave in this land. Bwana asifiwe sana. But when the Lord had started the plan, the Lord had started to prepare them so that he may take them into his presence that they may be able to find the breakthrough that they needed for their lives while in his presence. Bwana asifiwe sana. So in the book of Exodus, the Lord started uh, uh, preparing Moses. He told Moses to go to Pharaoh. We know about all the plagues. Uh, we know about all the miracles that the Lord uh, did before, the, before Pharaoh. And then they started the journey. They went uh, in the book of Leviticus. They were in the wilderness. Uh, in the book of Deuteronomy. And then in the book of Joshua, they got into the land of promise. Bwana tukuzwe sana. The Lord had now uh, started showing them, this is now my presence. This is where I want you to dwell. This is what I was promising you. This is what I was telling you about uh, when I was talking to you about milk and honey. And when they, 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 they sent their spies, uh, the spies, some of them uh, brought reports that were not good uh, and they did not see the land. Uh, but those who came with the right report, they were able to see the land. And when they crossed Jordan, the, jo the Bible says that, the Bible confirms that the banks of the, the river Jordan had, uh, it had broken the banks. It was overflowing because it was in that season. But the Lord who is mighty helped them to cross the river uh, Jordan. So now you would think, now they've entered into the promised land into the presence of the Lord, that it was time for them to dine, the time for them to relax. But the Bible declares, or the Bible tells us uh, that they found Canaanites in the land. It was the land of promise, but there were Canaanites in that land. The Bible confirms uh, that the Midianites were there. The Bible confirms uh, that the other Canaanites, the other peoples were there in that land. There were altars of the Canaanites. Uh, there were altars of the Midianites. Uh, there were altars of the Cushites. Uh, uh, not the Cushites, the other name. The, I'm, I'm forgetting that name. But there were those altars of the Canaanites in that land. So they are in the presence of God. They are in the land where the Lord had promised them that that is where I want you to go and dwell. Uh, in that land you will be able to worship me. But lo, to the children of Israel, there were altars of the Canaanites. Bwana sifuwe sana. And so they dwelt, our, the, the Bible records uh, that the Lord told them uh, that I will go before you and you will be able to drive out uh, all the, 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 the Canaanites that have, uh, have dwelt in this land that I, am promised, I have promised you. This land that I have talked to you about. And they were able to drive them. Bwana sifuwe sana. And then now we come to the book of Judges. The children of Israel, when they were, they had dwelt in the land. They got comfortable. At times they sinned before God. At times they went out of the ways of the Lord. Because they, they found Mary. They relaxed there. They did not, uh, they did not worship the Lord as they ought to. They, they left the presence, or they were in the presence of God, but they left the ways of the Lord. And that is why now we come to the book of Judges, Judges, uh, Judges chapter 6. 
Judges chapter 6, the children of Israel, even after seeing all the miracles of God, even after encountering all the encounters that they had with God, in Judges chapter 6, uh, from verse, we shall read from verse 1 to uh, around verse 4. Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian for seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel. Because the Midianites, the children of Israel, made for themselves the dens, the caves, and the strongholds which are in the mountains. So it was whenever Israel had sown, Midianites would come up, also Amalekites, and the people of the east would come up against them. Uh, then they would encamp against them and destroy the produce of the earth as far as Gaza and leave for no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep nor ox nor donkey. And then you continue there, you understand how uh, devastated uh, the, the enemies would leave them in those times. Bona sifu sana. So these children of Israel, I was wondering, now they are in the presence of the Lord and they have sinned before God and now again the enemy finds another way to come back into the lives of the children of Israel. Bona sifu sana. And something funny is that uh, when the Midianites did not just come at any time, uh, they would let the children of Israel uh, to sow the seed. Uh, they would let the seed to grow. Bona sifu sana. The enemy will not come when there, there, is no, uh, there is no evidence of the provision of the Lord. Uh, the enemy did not come when there was no evidence uh, of the doings of God in their lives. They were in the presence of God, but still the enemy came back. Walikuwa katika uwepo wa mungu, lakini adui bado alikuwa nakuja. Bwana tukuzwe sana. And that is why now for the topic of the day is that, uh, the, that we may find uh, the, the breakthrough, our breakthroughs, uh, when we are in this presence of God. Sana. Because we are not the people of the world uh, that to say kwamba sisi tunatafuta the breakthroughs of God. Uh, but because we are saved, uh, because we are in the presence of God, uh, we are finding this breakthrough even when we are in the presence of God. Sana. So the children of Israel will sow their seed. And something else here is that they had also, they had made for themselves uh, the dens and the caves where they would hide. They were in the presence of God, but they also uh, saw a reason to hide in the caves. Wana sifuwe sana. Kwani ni mungu mgani huyu ambao walikuwa na abudu? It is the same God that drove out the, the Midianites. It is the same God that drove out the Canaanites from the land of promise. We are called of the name of the Lord. We have been called into this kingdom. But how many times do we find, do we look for scriptures that we can say they are our dance of hiding? How many times do we look or search for the scriptures to be able to hide, to continue walking in a sickness, to continue walking in times of uh, uh, how many times have we searched for scriptures to in our situations? We are in the presence of God. We are reading the word of God. But how many times have we made caves to hide in? I was reading this word. in my heart. How many scriptures have I looked for in in a situation? That I know this situation is not the will of God in my life. Uko maybe na ugonjwa flani. Ama unapitia hali flani. Na wewe unajua ya kwamba this word has everything that we need in our lives. Na wewe umeenda umechimba that dinner. Umechimba umetafuta that cave. Umetafuta a scripture. Sijui kama nina eleweka vizuri. Ya kwamba you find a scripture that will tell you continue to hide here. That will tell you, the Lord will strengthen you even as you walk in this sickness. Uh, that, will, the, that will encourage you as you walk in a sickness. Uh, the, a scripture that will encourage you. Oh, sijui kama nina jueleza vizuri, lakina sema hivi, that this word has everything. Ukitaka uka katika laana, hi neno itaweza kupatia encouragement. If you walk without knowledge, this word, buwana sifuwe sana, 
This word will tell you, will give you everything that you need. If you walk without knowledge, this word gives you knowledge to understand that you can be able to, to be saved from every kind of a, a chain. That this word tells you that the Lord has power to break the chains up. That the Lord has power to get you out, the, out of the dungeons. If you have this word and you put knowledge that you are given by the Spirit of God. So the children of Israel, during those times, they encouraged themselves. They went into the caves. They went into the dens. They knew that in the dens, they were safe. They thought in the dens, everything would be fine. But in another season, the Midianites would come. And the Midianites did not come just at any time. They would wait for the harvest season. And they would destroy the crops. They would leave them devastated. They would leave them without nothing. And so the children of Israel would encourage them by taking some of the harvest into the dens. By taking some of what they would be able to salvage into the dens. So uh, the Bible records that they would hide into uh, the caves and in the dens. And something else I was uh, understanding here is that the, I, I was imagining how Israel, uh, the land is fertile. The land, the Lord will bless them with the rains. The world, Lord will give them the right soil for them to be able to get, to get harvest. And during all this time, come on, Uganda, Israel, I'm imagining during those times, every visitor that came when the crop was growing before the time of harvest, everyone would think that these people are fine. Bona sifuwe sana. Ya kwamba we, wakati unapo ngangana, wakati unapo eh, pigana, ama wakati unapo, if I may give an example, wakati uko katika shule, unangangana, unaone ya kwamba I am doing well. Unaone ya kwamba this one I will succeed in future in my life. Because I am doing well. I am becoming, you know, the top in the class. But wait until, the enemy will wait until the time of harvest. When if anyone would visit you or if anyone would ask you when you are in school and you are topping in your class, everyone would say, this one has a bright future. Who you have a kazi in future? Who you lazima tanganganiwa na wajiri? And that was the same case for the children of Israel. That when the crop was growing, when everything was doing well, everyone would think that these people have plenty, that these people will harvest, that these people will never lack. But the enemy waited until the time of harvester, he will destroy the cropper, and this made the children of Israel to go into hiding in the times when they had the time to settle now in the presence of God. Bona sifuwe sana. Bona tukuzwe sana. Staki tupote. So the enemy will come because the Bible has confirmed that the enemy came in verse 4 to destroy the produce. Bona sifuwe sana. He did not uh, uh, come in the time of sowing. He did not come in the time of waiting. He did not come in the time when everything was not ready. He came when there was produce. And we know that, uh, that produce is the end product of raw materials. So the enemy came when it was their time to reap the harvest. And the children of Israel would find solace in the dens and in the caves. But for us today, we are going to find our breakthrough. We are in the presence of God. They dwelt in the land of promise, but they did not get their breakthrough because they did not understand maybe what dwelt in their lives. They did not know what it meant to be in the land of promise. But sisi siku ya leo, tumeambiwa ya kwamba, we are in the presence of the Lord. Sisi niambao tumeitua kwa jina la mungu. Sisi niambao tumeokoleo na damu ya pale msalabani. Sisi niambao deni yetu ililipu wa pale msalabani. Nandiyo ya kwamba leo tunasema, we are finding our breakthrough in his presence. We are finding our breakthrough while in his presence. We are not of the world. We are not Canaanites. Those that came in the times. We are not like the children of Israel that did not have understanding. But for us, we have this understanding that because we are in his presence, we are getting our breakthrough. Everything looks fine. From outside, people will look at you and tell you that you are doing well. But you know the purposes and the will of God concerning your lives are 
and you know that you are hiding in that cave. You know you have been hiding in that den because you are afraid you might lose that job. You are afraid that the enemy may come and make you lose that job. You are afraid that if you say some things, maneno hayata kuwa mazuri, and you have been hiding in your caves. You have been hiding in your dens. But the Lord is telling you today, find a breakthrough even when you are in my presence. Bwana sifuwe sana. Ata wakati you are, you are dwelling in the land of promise. I am telling you, there were altars before you came. I am telling you, the Canaanites dwelt in that land. If you do not seek, you will remain hiding in the dens and in the caves in your time of harvest. Bwana sifuwe sana. So, these children of Israel dwelt physically in the land, but they did not dwell in the spirit. Their spirits did not understand. Their hearts did not understand what it meant to be called a child of God. They did not understand what it meant to dwell in the land of promise. So let's read in the book of Genesis that we may be able to understand what it means when in the book of Genesis Chapter 20, uh, uh, Genesis chapter 21, chapter 21, verse 30. Ilitweze kuelewa zaidi what it means when you dwell in the presence, when you dwell or when you seek your, for your breakthrough while you are in the presence. When you are seeking for your breakthrough. Genesis 21, uh, verse 30. The Bible says that, and he said, you will take these seven uh, ill lambs from my hand that they may be my witness that I have dug this well. 20, uh, 31. Therefore, he called that place Bathsheba because the two of them saw an oath there. So the same scripture I will connect it with uh, chapter 21 but verse 14 to 19. That there was a covenant that was made by Abraham and Abimelech that that place uh, would, uh, that they made they made an oath uh, concerning that place. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and putting it on her shoulder he gave it and the boy to Hagar and sent them out, her away. Then she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Bathsheba. Fifteen. And the water in the skin was used up, and she placed the boy under one of the shrubs. Continue. And then she went and sat down across from him at a distance of about a bow shot. For she said to herself, let me not see the death of, my, of the boy. So she sat opposite him and lifted her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad. Then the angel of God called Hagar out of heaven and said to her, what ails you, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the Lord where he is. Uh, 19. Uh, uh, arise, lift up the Lord and hold him with your hand, for I will make him a great nation. 19. Then God opened her eyes and saw, she saw a well of water and she went and filled the skin with the water and gave the lad a drink. So, we see in the book of, uh, the, 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 where we have read about uh, Abraham make, making an oath or an agreement with Abimelech, we understand that Abimelech and Abraham, they made an agreement concerning that place. That Abraham and Abimelech, they sat down and they had an agreement concerning uh, uh, their place. You come and the right, uh, the right scripture about Abraham and Abimelech. Yes, Abraham and Abimelech, they had an agreement concerning the place, and they called the place Bathsheba. And because they called that place Bathsheba, it was known that since that time, they, there was a presence there was something that was planted in that place. 
wanasifuwe sana. And that is where, why when you read the book of Genesis, uh, the story about Isaac, uh, that when he dug wells, uh, the people that of, the, of that land, they came and they attacked Isaac and his servants. Until the time that Isaac dug the well in that place that was called Bathsheba. Ndiyo wakati alipopata his rest. Bwana asifuwe sana. This helps us to understand that you may be in the presence because uh, this makes us to understand that Isaac, yes, Isaac dug wells and there were waters, you know, waters in those wells that he dug there before he went to Bathsheba. But he did not find his peace because he had not come to that place of the presence of God. He had not come to that place where a covenant was raised or was made. And until that time that he dug the well, with that, uh, the well that was in Bathsheba, that he found his peace. You can read that in the book of uh, Genesis, is it 26, uh, verse 23? There you shall read. That it is until when he dug a well in that place that was called Bathsheba that he found his peace, that he found a place to dwell. That until... Because Isaac, the Bible is helping us to understand as Christians uh, that you should not stop digging a well uh, until you find that place uh, where you shall find your peace in the Lord. Until you get to that place uh, that is in the presence, uh, until you find that breakthrough. Uh, yes, you are in the presence of God. Uh, yes, you are in the will of God. Uh, but until you get to that breakthrough, until you get your breakthrough, you should not rest. Uh, because Jack uh, or Isaac knew what was spoken concerning his life. Uh, through his father, there was a covenant that was made uh, with the Lord and, uh, and, and uh, Abraham uh, that his, his children would be blessed. Uh, and Jacob was here. The enemy was following him. The enemy was attacking him. When the enemy did not let him rest. Uh, he dug the wells. Uh, he could find water. He dug the wells in that land uh, and he could find water, but he had not found rest. He had not found his breakthrough. He was in the presence, but he had not found his breakthrough. As Gideon, in the times of Gideon, they were in the presence of God, but they had not found their breakthrough. Even in our lives today, we are a people called in the name of the Lord. How many times have you tried to pray? How many times have you missed your breakthrough? It is until you get to your place of Bathsheba that you shall find your breakthrough. And what place is that? It is when you read this word, when you get the knowledge, when you get the understanding that you may be able to pray that which is the will of God. Why did I read uh, uh, that story about Hagar? It is because Hagar sat in that place. She did not know there was water nearby. She did not know she was in the presence of God. She did not know what was there close to her. And how many times do we as Christians, how many times do we cry? How many times do we lay the lad aside that we may not see him die? How many times have we let that which we love so much. How many times have we let of our ministries? Iweze kuka kando kwanza kwa sababu ni meona. Hapa ni pagumu sana. Ni marangapi umekuwa na ndoto. Na umesema ya kwamba hii ndoto imekata kuja kuonekana katika maisha yangu. Kwa hivyo ni naiweka kando kwanza. Ni marangapi umepitia katika ugonjwa. Na umesema ya kwamba sasa ugonjwa ni kama ni wangu. Na umesema ya kwamba let me keep that aside. Because I do not want to see the Lord dying. So today we are saying uh, that we are finding our breakthroughs. Uh, we are in the presence of God. That they, but there is one thing that we've not found. Uh, there is one thing that we have not found. Uh, that is why we've been hiding in the caves. Uh, that is why we've been going into the dens. Uh, that is why we've not had what we have prayed for. It is because, yes, we are in the presence. Uh, but we have not found our breakthrough. And why have we not found our breakthroughs? It is because we've been like Hagar, who was in the presence, who, whom she had carried a promise. 
Because this son, some things or the words of the Lord were spoken upon Ishmael. But Hagar did not have that understanding of what she was carrying. She did not understand that she was carrying a great nation. She did not understand that the presence of God was walking with her. She did not understand about the prophecy that was spoken concerning her son. And that is why she set him aside. She did not want to see him die. But we thank God because today we understand that yes, we have sown the seed, that yes, the seed is growing up well, that yes, we are doing well with our, in our careers, but yes, we have not gotten to that time of producer, and that because we have the understanding that the Midianite is waiting upon that time of producer, that we know that the Midianite is waiting for that time of our healing, that the Midianite is waiting for that time of our restoration, the Midianite night is waiting uh, for our time of our breakthrough that he may hit us uh, but today because the word of the Lord is coming to us uh, we understand uh, that we are in Bathsheba we understand uh, that his presence is with us uh, we understand uh, that there is an oasis just nearby we understand uh, that we are carrying a great nation uh, we understand uh, there is a destiny that the Lord has prepared for us uh, we understand uh, that the word of the Lord uh, is powerful and is working in our lives uh, we understand uh, that the Lord is walking with us. And so the Midianite uh, will not scare us anymore. The Midianite will not scare us anymore. We shall dig another well. This well we shall dig it in Bathsheba. We shall pray to the Lord. We shall not lay the lad aside. We know this lad has a promise. We know this lad is a great nation. And there is an oasis just nearby. There is something great just nearby. The Bible records uh, that they were in the wilderness uh, where there were no waters, uh, where there was no hope. Uh, and the lady that is Hagar lay the ladder aside. Uh, she did not want to see his death. Uh, she did not want to see her pain. Uh, but today the Lord is telling us, uh, the Lord is encouraging us, uh, look around her. Uh, there is an oasis of water. Look around her. Uh, there is this water I have prepared for you. Look around her. Uh, there is a produce for you because you are in my presence you shall not just dwell in his presence just for the sake of it we are not in his presence to suffer like the children of Israel in the times of Gideon. They did not know that because you are in the presence of the Lord, you have power to conquer. There is nothing that can stand before you. Oh, the Bible records that they were hiding in the dancer. That they, yes, they had the producer, but they could not enjoy of the producer because the enemy would come in their season of harvest. But today, because of the power of God, we are understanding, we are in his presence and we are finding the breakthrough through. We are finding our healing uh, because we serve a God who is mighty. I am saying in my life uh, that I will find my breakthrough because I am serving a God who is powerful. I am finding my healing uh, because I am serving a God who is powerful. Even to our children, we know yes, they have been doing well in the school. They have been doing well. It has been their time of sowing. But the Midianite waits for the time of harvest. The Midianite will wait them for them to collect. He will wait them for them to have sheep. He will, they will wait for them to have ox. And then they will come in the time of harvest. That the Midianite will wait for you to invest. He will wait for you to invest, be it in finances. He is waiting for you to invest so that he may, he may strike in your time of harvest. But today, because we are in the presence of God, because we know and we understand we are in Bathsheba, where there was a covenant that was raised, where there was an agreement of peace, we are arising in the spirit, and we are declaring by the power in the blood of Jesus, we shall be able to find our peace in his presence, in the name of Jesus, we are declaring by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, we shall find our breakthrough because we are in his presence, we are finding our breakthrough. The breakthroughs of our health, we shall find it because we are in his presence. Because 
uh, Bash, or, or because Hagar sat, she did not know she was in the presence. She did not have this knowledge that she was in the presence. She did not know what was around her. She did not know the presence of the Lord was with her. She did not have the understanding of what she was carrying. That is why she was ready to suffer. But for us, because we know, because we have understanding and by the help of the Spirit of God, because we have sowed our seed and because we have this understanding that we are destiny carriers, because we have this understanding that the blood of Jesus Christ uh, has spoken good things concerning our lives uh, because we have understanding uh, that healing is our portion uh, because we have the understanding uh, that we are people of breakthrough because we have the understanding uh, that there, is, there lies a great destiny before us. Uh, we will not die in the wilderness. Uh, we shall find our breakthrough. We shall find our healing. Uh, we shall find our restoration. Uh, we shall see the greatness of the Lord uh, even in the lives of our children. Uh, so we shall continue to dig wells. Uh, we shall dig a well uh, where we shall not find a peace. Uh, we shall go to another place. Uh, we shall dig our well. Uh, we will not hide in the caves. Uh, we will not hide in the dens. Uh, we shall dig another well uh, until we find our Bathsheba. We we shall dig uh, because the Lord is the one uh, that gives us strength. Uh, because the Lord is the one uh, that grants us grace. Uh, we shall dig another well and another one. If I do not find peace here, I will dig another one. Because the grace of the Lord uh, is upon me. I will pray even more. I will fast even more. I will wait on the Lord even more. For I know I am in his presence. And there is a breakthrough in his presence. I will not dwell there. I will not rest. The Bible encourages us that Isaac dug another well. The Bible tells us that Hagar had a voice. She knew this one has gone to the drain. Yes, I, I was happy. I was mocking my, my, my master that, uh, that is Sarai. I was mocking her because I knew I was in a safe place. I knew I would survive her. I knew that my son was a blessed son because she saw the blessings that were upon Abraham. But at this time, she lost hope. How many times have you prayed? Have you started the journey knowing that I am going to succeed? Knowing that if I invest here, I have heard the voice of the Lord. Knowing that you know the promises of the Lord concerning your life. Uh, you know that if I invest here, I will get my returns. Uh, how many times have you done that and then gotten to that place that Hagar was in? Now, can give up. You gave up because Kwamba. Ah, God, I have heard your voice. God, if I invest here, I am getting my breakthrough. That God, once I start this journey, I am getting my healing. But one, now you get to that place where Hagar was uh, in the wilderness. There was no help around her. The strength that you have, uh, the money that you had to invest because the bread that Hagar had received uh, and the water that they had, uh, the Bible records uh, that it goes finished. They, it was all used up. She did not have hope. She could not see anyone. She could not see the end of the wilderness. How many times have you gotten to that place and you start wishing oh maybe I, if I could have the strength I would just go back and start afresh. If I had more strength I would go back and start it up again. But the Lord today is encouraging you look around. Look around. Do not give up. Do not give up. You are not going to die. There is a promise upon your life. Uh, there is a word that I have spoken uh, concerning the sons of Abraham. There is a promise in your life. Uh, there is a destiny in your life. Uh, there is a destiny in your children. Uh, and I am telling you today, look around. Uh, yes, you are in the wilderness. Uh, yes, you are in that place that you do not find hope. Uh, but I, the Lord, uh, I am speaking you in this time uh, that find strength. Uh, look around. Uh, there is water. There is a stream of water. There is a breakthrough where you are. 
in your prayers, uh, in your time of waiting, uh, there is a breakthrough. In your time of praying, uh, there is a breakthrough around you. Do not give up hope. Uh, do not give up hope. Uh, do not give up hope. Uh, there is a breakthrough around you. There is something that you have not seen uh, that is around you today. There is something that you have not heard. Uh, it is around you today. Be it in your ministry, there is something that is around. Uh, it is just nearby. Hagar was told, the waters are nearby. Amen. We thank God. Yes, there is a breakthrough in your life. There is that place that an oath was made, that an agreement was made on the cross of Calvary. Jesus Christ died, and the Bible confirms that he rose, he seated on the right hand of the Father, that we may know we serve a God. We have a Jesus who is our advocate. He finished it all at the cross. He finished it all at Calvary. That we may not suffer the same. That we may not suffer shame. Are you in shame? Are you suffering shame? Are you suffering sickness? Are you suffering any kind of difficulty? The Bible confirms there was a covenant that was made at Calvary. There was a blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. And so today you do not need to suffer for the same. Just know that you are in his presence and have this knowledge that in his presence there is a breakthrough that in his presence you shall draw of the waters that you need in your life. Bona sifuwe sana. Bona sifuwe sana. I hope at Japotea. So uh, if we read in the book of John chapter 5 John chapter 5 at times when we walk Maybe without understanding, chapter 5, verse 7, if we dwell in his presence and then we miss or we lack the understanding that we are in the presence of the Lord, we may not be able to get this a breakthrough that we desire in our lives. We may not be able to see the goodness and the, uh, and the, and the blessings of the Lord may not be uh, revealed in our lives. So uh, in the book of John chapter 5 verse 7, that there was this sick man, that, sh uh, that this man was in the presence of the Lord. Because he could see with his own eyes, the angel of God comes at certain times and he stirs the waters. How many times have we been in the presence of God? We have seen other people receiving their blessings. We have read in the Bible the blessings of God. What God has done for other people. We have read in the papers or in other places we have read and we have seen the blessings of God in people's lives. And the sick man in uh, John chapter 5 verse 7 that the sick man answered him. Uh, if we read uh, that uh, verse before chapter seven, uh, verse 7 I mean I think verse 6 or 5. Start from verse 5. Uh, if we read verse 5, uh, now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. Six. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? The next verse. The sick man answered him, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool. When the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. This man knew there was the pool of water. Not just a, a, a common pool that was in that place. And the Bible confirms that he suffered this for 38 years. He could see people receiving their blessings. But he had one thing that he would complain about. He had one thing that he could murmur about. That he had that thing uh, that he was always complaining. Uh, that he felt this is my weakness. Uh, that he felt this is what I am lacking. Uh. He did not understand uh, that he was in the presence of God. Uh, and that he did not just need that moment to receive his blessings. That he dwelt, oh, the Bible confirms uh, that he was lying there beside the pool. Uh, he had the, the experience of the blessings that the Lord was doing in that place uh, for 838 years. But one thing he did not understand. Uh, he did not have this knowledge. Uh, he did not have what, uh, what most of us as Christians lack. He did not have it. 
that which we also lack or miss at times. He was in the presence, but he could not find his breakthrough. He was in the presence, but he could not find what was said concerning his life. And that is why when Jesus was telling him uh, in that, uh, verse, uh, was it verse 6 or verse 7, that Jesus told him, would you want to be well? Do you want to be made well? Do you want to be made well? Yes, you are here in my presence. But the Lord is asking you today, do you want to continue hiding in the caves and in the dens? Or do you want to be made well? Do you have the courage to stand and tell Christ, uh, yes, Jesus Christ, I've been dying for this. Uh, I have always desired to be made well. May you make me well today. Are you presenting your case before the Lord uh, that I have been here beside the pool, uh, but I have not found my chance uh, to be made well? Uh, that I have been here, but I've been hiding in the caves. Uh, that I have been here, but I've been waiting for the time uh, of my harvest and been hiding uh, in the caves. Jesus is asking you today. Yes, you are beside the pool. Yes, you are near Bathsheba. Yes, you are near my, you are in my presence. But do you want your breakthrough? Do you want your healing? Do you want your restoration? Do you want your uplifting? Do you want the power of God in your life? You are in my presence. But if you do not have the knowledge of the breakthrough of God, you can continue suffering in his presence. You can continue staying or stagnating. Yes, you are in the presence, but you can continue staying in the same place. And so, as I refer back to the same scripture about Isaac, that is in chapter 26 of Genesis, that Isaac dug the first well. He did not find peace there. They came, they attacked her, and then he went to the second well. He dug to the well where he found her, his Bathsheba. Even today in our lives, how many times have you dwelt beside the pool? How many times, for how long have you been beside the pool? And yet no breakthrough have you seen? How many times, for how long have you been in his presence? But you have not seen your breakthrough. Today Christ is telling you, yes, you are here. Yes, Hagar, you are in my presence. But I am telling you, you have to open your eyes uh, that you can be able to see the oasis of water. You have to open your eyes. Uh, are you ready? Are you willing to receive this healing? Uh, you have been in my presence. Uh, you have been lying beside the pool. Uh, but today I am asking you, are you willing to receive what I want to do for you? One as if we son. In your career, you've been there. Everyone else have thought that you are doing well. As the children of Israel could sow their seed, they could plant. Everything was fine. The rains were there. The soil was finer. Everything was doing well. In your career, if other people look at you, they may think or they may feel that our brother is doing finer. My sister is doing well in her career. My brother is, is thriving in their career. But you know there is something. There is a time of producer. There is a time when you, you ought to get to the, to the peak of your career. And you know this is what I want. And you know you've been crying to the Lord. You've been there. Yes, you've been in the line of the Lord. Uh, the Lord has been taking you. Uh, yes, you have been in your career. And yes, you know this is the will of God. Uh, that this is the way that the Lord wants me to pass. Uh, but you've gotten to that place uh, before you are producer. Before you see your harvester. Uh, the enemy has come. Uh, the enemy has come. Uh, and he has caused you to stagnate. When everyone else looks at you, everything is fine. But you are stagnating. But you are not moving. But you are there. You are not doing well. Everyone else thinks that you are fine. But it is you who knows that the Lord has put in you. It is you who knows that the first well that you have not found peace is not your dwelling place. It is you who knows that the second well is not your dwelling place. It is you who knows there is a Bathsheba. There is an oasis of water. It is you who knows what the Lord has put in you in your ministry. It is you who knows the breakthroughs of the Lord uh, that you want to get to. So when everyone is praising you, just know you have a mission. You have something that the Lord has put in you. This man 
knew that he needed a healing. He knew that he was lying there beside uh, the waters that were stirred by the Spirit of the Lord. Uh, from time to time, uh, the waters were stirred up, uh, but someone else will jump in before him. Uh, and this time, uh, Christ had come before him uh, and he was asking him, uh, do you want to get well? Uh, you have been waiting for me and I am here. You have been waiting for that promotion. Uh, you have been waiting for a recommendation uh, from your boss, uh, but Christ is asking you today, you are here I am here. I want to bless you. I want to heal you. I want to restore you. You do not need uh, any recommendation. Uh, you do not need uh, to get into the pool. Uh, you do not need uh, to jump into the physical pool. Uh, I am here to heal you. I am here to restore you. I am here to uplift you today. Because I know you have been in Bathsheba. You have been in my presence. Uh, but one thing uh, you have been lacking uh, is my breakthrough. You have been uh, in my presence, uh, but you have been lacking uh, my breakthrough. You have been lacking uh, that which makes a difference in your life. Because if you remain there in his presence, it will be said that Christians are the people who are not blessed. Or it is better to be in the world because the world people think that they are blessed so much, they have so much wealth. Uh, but the Bible confirms uh, that their grounds are slippery. Anytime they would fall. Uh, but for us who are anchored in Christ, uh, the Bible confirms uh, that the blessings of the Lord, uh, that are with, uh, they, they, uh, they bring peace to our lives. Uh, the blessings of the Lord. Uh, oh, Jehovah God, uh, that your blessings are yes and amen. Uh, you know the scripture that confirms uh, that there are those blessings uh, that bring peace to our lives. Uh, there are those blessings blessings uh, that are, are not of the world. Uh, they are not of the world. Uh, there is those that blessing uh, that is supernatural. Uh, there is that blessing uh, that is uncommon. Uh, that uh, Like this blessing uh, that this man was about to receive uh, when he was asked by Christ. Uh, yes, everyone else is jumping into the pool. Uh, everyone else is brought by their family. Uh, they are helped to jump into the pool. Uh, but today I am Christ in your life. Uh, I am asking you today, do you want to be made well? Uh, do you want to be made well? Uh, yes, I know. There are those who jump before you. Yes, I know. You've been dwelling in my presence. Uh, but there is one thing uh, that I want to show you. There is one thing uh, that I want to do in your life uh, that will make a difference difference uh, that will make you not remain uh, the same way that you started uh, and that is I am asking you today do you want uh, to be made well so this man was asked do you want to get well do you want to be made well and this man as I told Jesus Christ oh Jesus Christ Oh, Jesus Christ. Every time I try to rise up, get into the waters, another steps down before me. Another person steps down before me. How many times have you told the Lord the same? He has talked to you. He has spoken to you. He has showed you the direction. But you're telling him, Christ, every time I try to enter, Every time I try to dive into the pool to receive my healing, someone else gets there before me. But Christ today is telling you, verse 8, that Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed, and walk. That today, Christ is telling you, you are in my presence, but you've not received my breakthrough. You may be doing well in another way or in another uh, angle. But on this angle, you are not doing well. You are not doing fine. And that is why I'm telling you, my son, my daughter, I want to heal you. You do not have to jump into the pool. You are in my presence. There is one thing that you are lacking. And that is a breakthrough. A breakthrough. A breakthrough. So these children of Israel, they would sow their seed. They would plant so well. And everything will do well until their time of produce. If you read the, the same chapter of Judges, uh, uh, the same chapter of Judges, chapter 6, uh, from verse 14 to 15, as we conclude, because uh, we see here that in verse 8 of John, uh, uh, the same Nini uh, that we have read, that he, Jesus Christ, told this man to rise, take up your bed, and walk. 
And then uh, in Judges chapter 6, verse 15, 14, just Judges 6, 14, the Bible tells us, the Bible tells us that then the Lord turned to him and said, go in this might of yours and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? Bona sifuwe sana. Bona tukuzwe sana. That this man, he slept beside the pool for all the 30 plus years and his time of healing had come and Jesus was asking him, do you want to get well? Do you want to get well? Or you are used to staying in my presence without a breakthrough. And this man t tells Jesus that every time I try to enter, someone else jumps in before me. And Jesus Christ told him, take your mat, rise and walk. And now in, the, in this, uh, the book of Judges, chapter 6, uh, verse uh, 14, the Bible records uh, that the Lord is confirming to you that I am giving you power. I am commanding you today because you have received my knowledge, because you have understood that being in my presence alone is not enough, because it commanded us to feel and to take dominion over the earth, because the book of Genesis tells us it is upon us to take dominion. The Bible tells us in the book, in this book of Judges, uh, that the Lord turned to Gideon. Uh, he could see what Gideon was doing. Uh, he was hiding in the dens and in the caves. Uh, and in this time, he was telling Gideon, uh, go in this might of yours. Uh, I am commanding you right now to go in this might of yours. Uh, the little strength that you think you have, uh, the Lord is telling you this morning, uh, or you are getting this encouragement, uh, that go into that destiny that you desired, uh, that enter into the that time of healing uh, that you have desired, uh, that little uh, fire, uh, strength that you think you have, uh, that little might that you think you have, uh, the Lord is telling you, uh, because you are in my presence uh, and I am giving you breakthrough today, just go into it uh, with that might that you have. Uh, I am telling you today that you shall save Israel uh, from the hand of the Midianites uh, and the Lord is asking you today, have I not sent you? Have you not heard my voice? Uh, have you not heard my voice? Have you not understood from my word that I am telling you, go. You are the hand that I want to use to save the Israelites from the hand of the enemy. You have understood that the Lord is sending you. That, to, that, uh, that you, you may enter into that time uh, of saving your family. The Lord is sending you into that time uh, of praying your way into your breakthrough. That the Lord is sending you into that time uh, of your healing. Uh, and he's asking you, have I not sent you? Because I can see that you want to give me all the excuses that you have. Uh, as in verse 15, uh, you want to give me all the excuses. Uh, and I am asking you today, have I not sent you? Have I not sent you? I, the Lord, uh, who has power. And because we, uh, if you read the same chapter, if you continue on, uh, uh, that Gideon was telling this angel of the Lord, uh, at the, that we have heard uh, of the miracles of the Lord uh, in the times of our ancestors. Uh, we have heard what the Lord uh, has done in the times uh, of Moses. Uh, but today we are suffering uh, in the hands of the Midianites. Uh, and the Lord is telling uh, Gideon this day, oh you Gideon, uh, have I not sent you? You want to tell me that you are so weak, uh, that you are clan, uh, you come from the clan uh, of the weak, or you come from the weakest clan, uh, and that your father's household uh, is the weakest in your clan. Uh, but I, the Lord, I am telling you, you have the might you have the strength you can be able to conquer because it is not by your power it is not by your strength but by the power of the spirit of God it is by the presence of the Lord that we receive our breakthrough in his presence because Gideon started giving his excuses that I am weakest in my clan that so he said to him oh Lord how can I save Israel Oh Lord, how can I pray myself into my healing? 
oh Lord, how can I take this step? I do not have any recommendations. I do not have anything, Lord. I have seen other people jumping into the pool. Every time I see as if I am qualified for this position, but when I try, other people jump in before me. Every time I try, other people jump before me. I do not have any recommendations, but the Lord is telling you today, have I not sent you? Have I not sent you? I am sending you because I know you are weaker and in your weakness my glory shall be seen. In your weakness I shall find praise that it may be known that I am God in your life. That it may be known there is a God in heaven whom we pray. Amen. Amen. Whom we pray. He whom, in whom we pray, we shall find our breakthrough. In whom we trust, we shall find our breakthrough. So today, this word is ministering even to my heart. That in any way, in anything that you want from God, yes, you are saved. It is not enough. The enemy is not scared by that. Because even the Midianites, when the Israelites came into the land, the Bible confirms that the Canaanites were sent off. They were sent out. The Lord confirmed that Nye atenda mbele ya wa Israeli. Na ya kwamba atafukuza wa Midiani katika inchile ya promised, the promised land. But at this time, it is confirming to us because you are saved. That does not scare the enemy. Because the enemy was sent out by the Lord himself. But he used to come back in the time of harvest. He would come back into the land, the same land that he was sent out by the Lord himself himself. See, you come on a part of that revelation. That in the book of Joshua, the Bible confirms that the Lord told Joshua, I will go before you. I will go before you. And you shall send the enemy out. I will send the enemy out before you. And you shall dwell. You shall take the land for yourselves. And the same Midian that was sent out of the land of promise, he is coming back. In the time of harvest, he is coming back to try his luck. Uh, that if Angepata Mwanya in your life, uh, he will destroy your harvest. Uh, he will destroy your produce. So today, it's just to tell us that find your breakthrough when you are in the presence of God. The enemy is not afraid. He will still come back to try his luck. And if he finds a door that is open, he will take your produce. So the word has taught us today that there is a breakthrough in this presence that we dwell in in this day. So, Nashukuru Bwana for his word. It has ministered to my life and to my heart. Bwana azidi kutukuzwa na azidi kunena hilo neno in our hearts. Barikiwe sana.